How wonderful person this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about some recent updates in regards to the mysterious phenomenon known as FRB. The unusual, unexplained radio signals that seem to be coming from everywhere around us, but the phenomenon that was not known to us until recently because of the advances in computing power. These signals are so ridiculously fast that they can only be detected by analyzing radio data coming from various telescopes using extremely powerful computers. Mostly because these signals only last a fraction of a second. And so up until recently, these signals were unknown to us. But ever since their confirmation, the scientists realized quite a lot of these signals happen every single day and essentially come from every direction in the universe. And so trying to solve this radio mystery has been one of the main goals for a lot of astronomers for the past decade. And so today we'll talk about some discoveries from the famous Green Bank Telescope, the Australia Sparks Telescope, the European Westerbork Telescopes, the Chinese 500 meter telescope known as FAST, and the Canadian telescope known as CHIME. And this one is actually particularly interesting because it was able to discover so many different FRBs in an extremely short time. Although originally it was designed to study something else. It was supposed to detect various types of hydrogen, or specifically the so-called 21 centimeter line, coming from the ancient regions of the universe. In this case this would be between 400 and 800 megahertz in frequency. But just by complete luck, this turned out to be a perfect telescope for FRBs as well. And more importantly because of its design, it's also able to trace back the FRBs to where they originally possibly came from. Which is how a few years ago, the scientists were able to discover one of these phenomena happening right here in the Milky Way. And it seems to have come from a famous magnetar. And so by detecting both X-ray emissions and radio bursts, the scientists were able to kind of connect these events. But at the moment, this is the only FRB discovered in the Milky Way and the only one directly connected to a magnetar. Nevertheless, in just the last three years, the scientists have already learned so much about these phenomena. For example, we know that they seem to come from various parts of the universe, and even various parts of different galaxies, all with different types of properties. And some of these parts of galaxies generally do not contain a lot of magnetars, so they do seem to come from different places. On top of this, their properties are not exactly the same. Not just frequency-wise, but also in the way that they generally display what's known as polarization or the effect that's usually produced by very powerful magnetic fields. And so even though some of them might be caused by magnetars or different types of magnetized neutron stars, there is a chance that some of them could also be produced by black holes or possibly something entirely different. In this case, obviously even extraterrestrial intelligence has been proposed as one of the potential explanations. Although in this case, because a lot of these signals seem to be somewhat random and do not contain a lot of patterns, this is not the best explanation. But in the last four years, the scientists have been discovering something really strange about these signals that's somewhat difficult to explain, but in theory could help us explain how all of this might work. The scientists realized that some of these signals seem to be repeated. A few of the FRBs seem to have come from the same location and very likely the same object. Now when this was originally discovered, this was a pretty big deal, but eventually the scientists realized something else. Even the repetition here seems to be more or less random. In other words, some of these repeated signals do not actually repeat with a very specific pattern. They're not particularly regular. They'll happen once, then they'll happen again sometime later, with quite a lot of variability. Except for one example. This was actually discussed a few years ago, but this FRB seems to actually repeat every 16.3 days. It's obviously currently unclear why, because this object is about half a billion light years away from us, but it's most likely because of something orbiting something else. Check out one of the videos in the description that explains this object a little bit better and talks more about the actual details. But very recently, in May of 2023, the scientists reported discovery of even more repeating FRBs, once again detected by the Canadian Chime, and once again from signals that were detected previously but we didn't really know were repeating at all. And once again located pretty much all across the night skies. And this basically doubles the number of repeating FRBs known to us, suggesting that at least 2% of all FRBs out there are definitely repeating. However, the main implication from the study is the fact that maybe all of them are repeating, but just most of them have a much, much longer period. Maybe some of them repeat every few months, some of them repeat every few years, and some of them could be repeating every few centuries. Or even longer. And because the scientists have already discovered several thousand FRBs out there, with a few hundred probably happening every single day but just not detected by us, it basically suggests that this is a very common phenomenon. It seems to be everywhere and it's caused by something extremely powerful. These events release a tremendous amount of energy in just a fraction of a second. Approximately the same energy that our sun produces 
in about one week time. But even though this is still a bit of a mystery, we might have more clues from a recent study that actually provides a really exciting explanation, based on a discovery from 2022. And this time once again coming from a repeating FRB that was observed for more than one year. But in this case, the scientists focused on trying to figure out patterns coming from the polarized light, or basically trying to figure out what sort of a magnetic field produces all of these effects. With this FRB sort of being perfect for these discoveries. For some reason, it produces a lot of FRBs all the time. It doesn't seem to rest almost at all. So basically, you can refer to this as the most repeated FRB ever. Which means that it provided a lot of data to the scientists trying to understand the environment around these objects. And so even though it's really far away from us, approximately 4 billion light years away, it allowed the scientists to collect enough data. And because a lot of these radio frequencies were highly polarized, this implied extremely powerful magnetic fields, which surprisingly were changing with time. And it was also changing depending on the frequency, which allows the scientists to figure out the total strength of the magnetic field that all of these signals travel through. With the most surprising discovery here being a kind of a pattern that seems to happen every 16 months. Or in other words, the strength of the magnetic field was varying every 16 months, and during that time even flipped its direction twice, something that has never been observed before. And to the scientists behind the study, this employs maybe one scenario. Some kind of a dense object, most likely a neutron star, seems to orbit around a very massive and most likely expanded star. A star that started to produce quite a lot of magnetic emissions, and very likely created an extremely large stellar wind region in its vicinity. So similar to very famous Wolf-Rayet stars, like this one known as WR124, recently observed by the James Webb. And so here, as the neutron star passes through certain parts of this expanded shell, in theory it might result in these fast radio bursts. And as the neutron star travels through the shell, as it moves in and out of the wind, it reverses the magnetic polarity. But the beauty of this proposition is, of course, that it's testable. Good science. If the scientists behind this paper are correct, we're going to be able to observe this again in the next year and a half. Or basically, by 2025, we might have our final answer. If it happens again, they are correct. If it doesn't, yeah, then something else is going on here. And so this is something we're going to be coming back to in the next few years. But this is, of course, not the only discovery in the last few months. As a matter of fact, the scientists have already started to figure out how to use these unusual signals to possibly even scan the entire universe. So kind of similar to how we use quasars and their powerful emissions to look at some of the gas the light passes through, in this case, when these signals pass through various types of gas, we're able to actually analyze everything as well. And since many of these signals are predictable, we can use many of these signals as a galactic scanner. Something that was recently done using various telescopes in Netherlands by looking at FRBs passing through the galaxy known as Triangulum, with the light providing enough information to physically measure things like electrons or even the total mass of the galaxy. And that's of course just the start. It means that eventually, in the next few years, we'll be able to physically use these signals to analyze everything they pass through, and for all we know, maybe in the next decade or so, they might even find more practical use here on Earth. For example, when the quasars were originally discovered, nobody thought we could use them for anything. Today, they are absolutely essential for a lot of things, including navigation and extremely accurate timekeeping. Check out more about this in one of the videos in the description if you want to know how we use them. And so on that note, once the scientists learn something else, or once the mystery is a little bit closer to being solved, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Check out previous videos on FRBs in the description, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.